Our next speaker for today is um, Emeka Boris Ama, and he would be speaking on best practices for machine learning operations, which is on strategies for building reliable and scalable machine learning um, ML ops and pipelines. Okay, so let's just put our hands together and welcome Emeka. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to, to the section. And I think everybody here is either an aspiring machine learning engineer, aspiring data scientist, or you're already in the ecosystem, right? Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. So I, I, I think I want to, I mean, I generally just want to like ask you guys, you know, generally, how is it going, you know? I mean, <laughs> it's tough out there, I know, right? But, you know, in general, how is it going? You know, maybe anyone can just, you know, answer that. Yeah, maybe anyone can just answer, like, maybe what they are doing currently, if they are learning or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you can. My name is Ashraf Abdulati, currently an aspiring data scientist. And um, currently, I'm learning the uh, NIME Analytics platform, which is um, a local data science platform that allows one runs uh, data science and data analytics tools, and also some data engineering um, okay. activities. So but that's basically what I've been learning. Trying to get a job in ML world has been <laughs> Yeah. and tasking and basically and also i'm um, also trying to learn fabric and see what how yeah. we can so basically i'm into low code data mm -hmm. science um platforms yes that's oh yeah that's 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 amazing amazing <laughs> yeah so I, I i think that to be honest uh surviving in the america system is quite tough but i just believe that if you keep pushing with consistency, you definitely have a breakthrough. So today, what we are going to be talking about today is mostly on after building machine learning models, what next, you know? And I'm just going to do like a uh, rough sketch on, I'm just going to like talk about MLOps and then I wanna move into the major topic today, which is like building resilient uh, machine learning models, things like guide, tips, and all of those things. So, uh, first of all, we'll start with uh, what is MLOps and, you know, why MLOps. So, the first thing you need to know is that MLOps is basically putting machine learning in production. But the amazing thing is that it doesn't just end there, right? There is a lot that has to go to putting this machine learning in production, building an infrastructure, and also monitoring this model in production because we are now moving away from what I call uh, model centric into infrastructure based or infrastructure centric, right? So like MLOps basically, um, or should I say why MLOps is, why you should do MLOps or why you should put MLOps into uh, consideration when you're setting up an um, machine learning model, right? is because you need to be able to manage the life cycle of this model. So the life cycle of this model will basically change based on the objective of the model, right? So moving on to the next one, uh, I, I, I think that one of the most interesting thing about MROPs is basically, uh, this is like a brief or uh, design, more like architecture of everything in MROPs, right? Starting from your objective down to the model development and then the operation. So the operation now include the infrastructure. So things like setting up CICD pipeline so that when the data scientist is done building, they just push the model to GitHub and then you run like automation testing, uh, automation deployment, integration, and all that kind of testing that you want to integrate in your pipeline. So uh, then we now have things like inference optimization, right? So we have a scenario where latency is a critical factor, right? So like, let's say for instance, you're building a loan default model, or you're building a transaction classifier, right? Um, for that kind of scenario where you are providing a service to customers, you need to be able to consider latency because most models or most machine learning models have issues with latency in terms of 
the amount of time it takes for them to process or run the operation and then return a result. So uh, moving on to the next one, uh, this is like a broad view of MLOps in general, starting from your data analysis down to your data validation where you do like data quality check and check if the data that you're transferring from a core database into a data warehouse is in the right format in terms of data type, in terms of uh, the kind of value you should expect and all of that. Then you now move into the model training, like I mentioned, model evaluation and model validation. Now the model evaluation is like, uh, model validation is like two sets, right? The first one is your IOC curve, your F1 score, you know, and all of those evaluation for a machine learning model. And then the next one is the testing part, where you do things like differential testing. You do things like um, uh, in inverse um, directional tests and uh, directional tests as well then those ones has to do with perturbing your data set. So you perturb a test data set and try to see how your model perform on that particular data set. And the amazing thing is that now, this is now the real job of an MOPS engineer because when the uh, data scientist is done uh, building the model, right, you basically have to be able to take this model to production. And taking this model to production means that you have to make sure that this model is ready ready in terms of testing, ready in terms of infrastructure to be able to handle the amount of user requests and, you know, from the API. So uh, the other part has to do with performance monitoring. Uh, performance monitoring is more of a software engineering technique where you try to understand uh, in terms of the API service, how, you know, um, login, of stability, and also the uh, workload when you do something like auto-scaling and that's of it. So I'm going to like talk a lot about those particular section, but I'm just going to like give a brief and then we are going to move into the particular point. So um, I actually categorize MROs based on what I've done so far for various companies. Uh, so I've been able to work in various companies uh, as an MRO engineer. So based on what I've done so far, I've segmented MROs in various sections, right? So like people get to confuse MOPs to DevOps, but I tell them that it's way like different from DevOps. There might be similarity, but it's totally different, right? Because as an MOP engineer, you are setting up model tracking. So like one of the things you need to know is that for every new project, for every machine learning model that your organization have, you have to set up an experiment tracking because most of uh, these models, right, are improved over time. So you need to be able to log things like the future, things like the model itself. Maybe um, you guys have like, instead of having model one, model two, model three, model four, and so on, you can be able to log every experiment, right? And then maybe you can also log experiment in terms of the evaluation results. You know, how the model perform over the evolution in terms of your building process, right? And then moving over to the next one, which is model seven. Yes, of course. As an MOP engineer, one of your major responsibility is serving this model. And serving the model means that you decide on what particular strategy should we use. Should we use the online um, serving or should we use batch prediction? Uh, so moving on to the next one, that's the deployment, which is part of the serving. And then the testing part. So the testing part now is focused on behavior expectation text. And one of the most interesting thing is that every model have a specific testing and most of them are different. So like uh, when I was working at Mono as a senior data scientist, we had a lot of NLP models and majority of our models were based on certain objectives. So like uh, I remember one of the models that I built at Mono which was a transaction classifier. So we had partners in Nigeria, partners in Ghana, and in South Africa. They were saying, okay, we basically want to understand the user transaction uh, in terms of the category at least the user spend on. And we want to have a count of, like a distinct count for each transaction, right? So we came up with um, a transaction classifier, and then we're able to uh, Divided, we, we deployed it into two sections, right? 
the first section was the batch prediction for people who feel like, okay, we have a backlog of transactions, right? And in our database, and we don't want your API, right? But we want a service in terms of a private, you know, Python library where we can basically run a batch prediction on all these transaction data sets. So instead of using like an API where we can do it online, since we already have a data set of transaction, we can just like run it and then just like update the user account, something like that. So, uh, so part of the testing we did for this particular model, we focus more on transaction perturbation, where you have a transaction, for instance, transfer from Victor to Boris, right? Uh, let's say GT Bank. Now we actually change it from GT Bank to like maybe Zinet Bank, and then change the Boris name to maybe a random name. And we now try to understand, will the change in these two variable affect the model performance? So some of those kind of tests are some things that you get to do as a number of engineer to understand that, okay, this model is ready for production and all of those things. So uh, CICD pipeline, yeah, that one is uh, really like, uh, very simple. So if you like take a course on GitHub Action you can and Terraform, you can be able to set up a CI/CD pipeline that basically um, trigger when there is maybe a staging environment, a production environment, or a test environment. Exactly. And the CI/CD pipeline you can utilize things like AWS Code Build, right? Where you can basically run the CI/CD on AWS Code Build, so you don't have to exhaust the GitHub, uh, so the GitHub action resources have a limit, and most of the machine learning model require a lot of resources to be able to run testing. So you can either, you know, use the custom resources, or you can decide to like use AWS code build. Uh, so the monitoring part uh, has to do with, uh, you know, monitoring for various things. So like you can look out for concept drift, you can look out for data drift. Uh, you can also look out for prediction drift, right? Where you can basically understand how this model is performing in production, and then you can set up a trigger that basically, okay, when it's on the setting, uh, you know, when you, when you, don't, you, on, you notice a setting outlier, right, in the uh, drift, you can be able to like set up a trigger that basically allow you to like go back to your drawing board, you know, understand, okay, if it's a data drift, for instance, a seasonal data drift, right, or let's say uh, one of the most interesting drift when I was at Mono that we always look out for is when um, a bank decide that they want to refast their transaction narration. So like for instance, instead of transfer from Victor to Bobby GT Bank, it now be maybe GT Bank transfer and then maybe just put Bobby and then they put Victor. So like bank can decide to change that. So we also need to understand that you know, we um, take note of things like that, you know, and all of that. So, uh, the next one would be inference uh, acceleration. So, inference acceleration is another important thing as an ML Open Engineer because you need to be able to, uh, you know, understand that latency is another major factor. And inference optimization has to do with two sections. So where you're basically optimizing this model in terms of converting or quantization, or you can optimize it in terms of doing distributed inference. And then you can decide to like do some other kind of computation, like maybe try to, uh, you know, like, maybe try to basically like after doing distributed inference, you can increase uh, the resources that are allocated to that server, or you can decide to uh, deploy a GPU server you know, something like that. So I'm just going to uh, rush really fast. Uh, then I think I'll move to the most important thing because my time is up. Uh, four MLOps tools, model compression, challenges, and solution. So the first thing I want to talk about is uh, optimized for functionality. So like as an MLOps engineer, for you to build a scalable pipeline, you need to really look at optimization for functionality. So when I mean optimization for functionality, focus more on wrapping majority of your features into a function level, right? So like you have something like um, something like this. I don't know if you can see. So instead of having 
a list of functions like this. You can decide to have functions that have various kind of parameters, and that can allow you run into so one various kind of objective. For instance, if you have GT Bank data set, right? Instead of running this on only GT Bank, I can run this on GT Bank. One is on Zenith Bank. One is on every other kind of bank. Um, putting in consideration that this bank passes the data differently. So like, uh, then the next one is B for scalability. Yeah, so B for scalability, automation, test like never before. I'm just going to like wrap it up because my time is up. Uh, then I think uh, for the M of uh, machine learning, compression and acceleration, look at maybe fasting your development process using uh, pre build model and then do some things like distillation, pruning, distributed inference, and um, quantization. Uh, I think I'll just move into this line, this my, uh, the last part. So like some of the challenges that most machine learning or ML engineer face and recommended solution because uh, so these are some of the things that you would actually face as a as an ML engineer. So like deploy machine learning models to production with um, minimal disrupt and downtime. So most companies actually don't really like apply some DevOps rules to MOPs, right? And that is where it comes to scalability and building resilient model. You need to be able to understand some DevOps tricks and tips, right? Uh, one of the most important thing that I was able to do at Mono was putting the blue green strategy where because we have partners that use our service. When we update our model, we don't want downtime. So we have to like apply the blue green strategy. And um, the next one would be scaling infrastructure to handle uh, workload and demand. I think one funny thing that happened to me at Mono was uh, my server crashing, right? And I think that really taught me a lot of lessons. So I had to migrate from digital ocean to AWS. And then I had to also use the AWS EC2 auto scaling uh, in order to like uh, get a lot of, um, should I say, handle a lot of traffic, exactly. Because I noticed that um, the server crashed because we had a lot of traffic. And then when the server crashed, because we had all our models in one server. So that is like a mistake you should never try. You know, like, so it's like all the service, you know, went down and then all the team were just like, marketing team on my neck, sales team on my neck, business team on my neck, engineering on my neck, product on my neck. So like everybody's like, boys, how far, how far, how far, how far, that kind of thing. So like you should never like deploy all the machine learning models in one server. And it's important that you put auto scaling group because you never know, you might just blow one day and then, you know, everybody's on your service, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> so you just have to like prepare for the service or prepare for the future rather. So uh, next thing is inaccurate model. So it's important for you to test your model, uh, you know, very well. And then I think, uh, so, so these are some of the resources that I think that you should actually read in order to understand best uh, strategy and practices for you to, you know, scale up, for you to build a resilient machine learning uh, pipeline. So uh, these particular resources will help you. And I'm also going to share it on Twitter. So if you follow me on Twitter, you see this link on uh, these resources. Uh, so yeah, so like if we basically, I work for Southern Cloud, and we offer like free uh, credit for anybody that want to deploy their machine learning model to test. So I think it'd be perfect if you, you know, sign up, <laughs> you know, help my business. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think it'd be perfect if you sign up and you know get free credit. Uh, to deploy one experiment and anything else. And we also have like GPU um, services. So you can basically like uh, try any of these uh, large language models and be able to like, you know, try an experiment. And we are quite cheaper than AWS, so you don't have to worry. And we have like auto scaling, you know, so we can handle any kind of traffic, you know, stuff like that. So uh, that is all for now. So. Uh. I think one of the most interesting thing about um, MOPs is that it basically helps you as a uh, machine learning engineer or as a business to basically optimize and gain a lot of benefit from your product in general. So uh, thank you so much. You can follow me, Mecca Boris, and 